guys, welcome back to my channel. Sass here. I'm here to do another review of Love After Lockup. It was an okay episode. Okay. I can't wait for next week, child. Honey, crackhead Tracy going through it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Alright, let's get into this week's episode. Alright, let's start off with Andrea and Lamar. All right, so as you know, Andre Lamar, she's in Utah. He's in L.A. because Andrea says that, you know, L.A. is dangerous. She's not with it. So she has her children, and she's in Utah, and she was like, listen, if Lamar want to be with me, he needs to come here. Now, Lamar, okay, he's in L.A., all right? He up there, you know, minutes to society. And he got papers, child. He says, I am off parole. He says that he's been in and out of the system since he was five and six years old. Okay? First, it started out with foster care. And then it just led to the penitentiary. <sighs> Ain't that something? So now, he's off papers, okay? Parole party. <laughs> And it ain't come to find out that he's going to go out and he's going to see her. Now, let's talk about this whole airport situation. So, Andrea and the kids go to the airport to pick up Lamar. All right? First of all, her kids are just, they are so pretty. And they seem so well behaved. Honey, they tired of their mama. You can tell the, old, the son and the daughter, the oldest daughter, they tired of their mama. Andrea is in that airport acting a fool. She's on her phone. She's checking the flight. She's like, where's he at? Why isn't he here? If he stands us up, I cannot 
believe he's doing this. I should have known better. I should have known better. I can't stand him. Ugh. I mean, the son looked at her and said, <laughs> you're acting like a teenager. That is exactly how she was acting. I don't understand in these reality shows, why do the children have better sense than the parents? I'm still trying to figure that out. How is it that the children has better sense than the parents? Okay. In the middle of her little paranoia and teenage fit, okay, she can talk about, well, we're half married. <laughs> is that what she said? We're somewhat married. Her son looked at her and said, what does that even mean? Exactly. Andre, you married this man straight out of the penitentiary. Y'all supposedly had closet love, even though there were some people in my comments that said they believe that's a lie, that's a lie. <laughs> so guess who shows up? Lamar. He finally shows up, okay? And the little girl, his daughter, she was happy to see her dad. The older kids gave him a hug. And here's Andre. Let's go. He was like, well, give me a hug. Let's go. <laughs> I was like, Andrea just act silly. Don't she? Don't she act silly? So then there was some missionaries, some young men who was going out to do some mission work. And here's Andrea. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My son. My son is going to do mission work. Come here, son. They're doing mission work. Oh, bless you. God bless you for your service. Bless you. Lord bless you. <laughs> and Lamar was like, oh, Lord, here we go. Welcome to Utah, Lamar. <laughs> Welcome to Utah. So they are on their way back. They're in the car and they're talking. And so Lamar was like, oh, God, what does Utah offer that L.A. don't? boy said safety <laughs> and so here's Andrea Andrea's like listen your brother got shot I ain't trying to go back to LA okay Utah has a better way of living safety okay the cost of living is down I ain't trying to hear it Lamar and so Lamar ain't even trying to hear it child Lamar is not living in Utah Okay, he is a L.A. boy through and through, so they might as well go ahead and split up if that's the case. If she's not going to go back to L.A. And he, ain't willing to, and he ain't willing to live in Utah, moving on. All right, let's talk about Britney and Latino Heat. Britney's tired, Joe. All right, she's tired. All right, they are having financial problems. So she called Latino. He just said, listen, we're going to have to talk. All right, now I was supporting you with this whole polka situation, but you need to get you a job. And he was like, well, you know, this polka situation is what's keeping us afloat. Okay, I've been doing pretty well with this polka situation. She was like, well, you ain't doing well enough. Okay, we got these kids. And we got lawyer bills, okay? You know why we got lawyer bills? Because you went over there to Tito's house after I told you not to go over there and bust him in the face. <laughs> so now we got to pay some lawyers. $20,000. Ain't that what they said? $20,000? Oh, my God. So anyway, so she was like, listen, I'm all for you playing that poker, but we need money. Okay, we need money, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Okay, that's that on that. He was like, listen, I'm 41 years old. You know, it's going to be hard for me just to walk into, you know, a job or a business and to be like, look, give me a job. And she was like, it's hard for you. You know, I'm not expecting you to go to McDonald's and flip burgers. But you're going to have to do something. Okay, it's hard for me. I am a felon. All right, I got everything working against me. All right, but we need some money, okay? You did this, going up in there like you Mike Tyson. <laughs> so, he goes down to the men's warehouse, and he 
got him a suit and tie, child. He got him a suit and tie. He said, I'm going to walk up in here with my head held high. That's what he said. He said, there's no one in here who can mess with me because I got a good old master's degree. I said, you better do it, Latino Heat. And can I just say, Latino's Heat, old picture, what he looked like with all that hair, the Latino Heat was fine. I was like, and somebody said that he was in Missy Elliott's working video. But anyway. So Latino, he walked up in there, honey, in that recruiter's office, honey, confident, until he met that recruiter. <laughs> honey, that recruiter did not throw him a ball. Did, honey, that recruiter didn't care nothing about Latino heat and that man's warehouse suit. He said, I don't know who you think you are. You think very highly of yourself to walk into my office and ask for sixty dollars to $70,000 a year. And you've been playing poker for six years. I think not. Latino Heat says that, listen, that poker plan has kept him and his family afloat, okay? But now, you know, he needs something more stable, like a check, all right? Now, the poker plan, he may get on the winning streak a week, a day, a month, but then it may be done a week, a day, a month. He may not win anything. But one thing for sure, he'll get a check every week or every two weeks or every month. That's for sure. All right. So the recruiter was like, well, man, it ain't going to happen with me. <laughs> okay. You're going to have to start off a little bit strong. Okay. You've been out this game for six years. And if you think me or any other company is going to risk taking a chance with you, Oh, no, it's not going to happen. You don't have any experience, okay? A lot has went on in six years. Honey, the recruiter was talking about software, office. <laughs> Do you know how to turn on a computer? I mean, he was talking to Latino Heat. Like, Latino Heat hasn't worked since 1985. <laughs> I was like, this man got a master's degree. You can get him, you know, like a little part-time job. You can get him something making, you know, you know, $30,000 a year. I mean, he does have a master's. So anyway, Latino, he, he took it to the chin. I guess he was like, well, I guess I just have to go elsewhere. I mean, I'm pretty sure this guy, this guy is not the only person that he can go to to find a job. You know, Latino, he, he can get him a job. He, he can do it. So he goes outside. And he calls Brittany, and Brittany was like, oh, how'd it go? How'd it go? And Latino, he said, I think it went well. It went well. I'll tell you more about it, you know, when I get home. I was like, honey, Brittany is going to be living. Honey, Brittany's going to be like, Lord, have mercy. That's Latino heat and Brittany. All right, let's talk about Shane. And Lacey, the Virginians. All right, so we have Lacey and Shane. And Lacey, Lacey, not Shane, Lacey, bought them a house. The house was nice, wasn't it? Nice little house. It looked like a nice little neighborhood. Here they come. <laughs> I bet them neighbors was looking out their window like, They done come, y'all. We've been living here for 30 years, and here they come. Child, what she got? It's her tits hanging out, child. And who is this young man? It's, it's 11 o'clock. Is he drinking beer? <laughs> Honey, Shane has been drinking all day, all night, next morning, the morning after that, child. Honey, he walked into that brand new sparkling clean house with a beer in his head. Honey, Shane was toe up from the floor up. Honey, towards the end of it, he was slurring his speech, wasn't he? So, the house is really nice. And, you know, they were talking about all of the stuff that's going on in the house. The, you know, the shower, the nice floors, who gets the closet, who don't get the closet. All right, so her dad and the kids come over. So, she's outside. 
talking to her dad. And so she tells her dad, she says, listen, I've been trying to text John. And her dad was like, mm-hmm. She was like, yes, I know. But he texted me saying that, you know, he was having chest pains. He was very depressed. You know, he has a history of drugs. So, you know, I'm worried about him. He's still my friend. So her dad was like, mm hmm did you tell Shane about all this texting that you're doing? And of course she was like, no, because I don't know what he's going to do. What do you think he's going to do, Lace? You think Shane is going to be like, oh, yes, you go. You know what? Let's go find John. Let's go find him and see if he's okay. Yeah, like Shane is going to do that. Okay, so. Later on, here is Lacey. Lacey's outside telling her dad bye. <laughs> Shane inside, still drinking. He's still drinking. He toe up. De -de 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 -de. He looks. There's Lacey's phone just laying there. You don't have no luck on your phone, girl. What does he see? He see Lacey sending texts to her friend about John. Shane, he been drinking. And he mad. So he go outside where there's Lacey. He all up in Lacey's face talking about, that's what you doing? That's what you doing? You talking to that dude? That's what you doing? He said, you said that you weren't going to talk to him no more. You said you will never speak to him again. And so she was like, um, you're spitting in my face.
And so the friend was looking at her like, And she was like, I tried to tell you. I know. But I loved him. I know. And so she was like, girl, he's paroled here. He's going to have to come back here. She's like, no, he's not. The friend was like, yes, he does. This is where you allow this man to parole. What, what, you, what are you going to do? He's not coming back here. I'm not letting him come back here. And so the friend was like, mm-hmm. Okay, so here comes Tony rolling up on that motorcycle that Angela bought him so he can go back and forth to work. But what she did know that he was going back and forth to whores. So he gets up and he was like, now listen, we need to talk. And she was like, there's nothing to talk about, okay? You are not stepping foot back in my house. And so he was like, what am I supposed to do? I'm paroled here. Okay, I love you. I'm sorry. She was like, that's all I hear from you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, you out there in some motel getting, getting your groove on with some whore. It's over, Tony. It's over. <laughs> and so he was like, listen, okay, we just need to talk this out. Everything is going to be okay. She was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Oof. Child, these two right here, crazy, all right? So Tony says, listen, okay, I just need to talk to Angela a little bit, okay? I just need to smooth things over a little bit, okay? I'm going to get back in that house. Don't you worry. I'm going to get back in that house. And yes, Tony, you will get back in that house. I'm so sick of Angela and Tony. I am sick of those two. Honey, if they don't ever grace my screen again, that's fine with me. I want to see Crackhead Tracy and Not Quite Right Clint. That's who I'm waiting on. We don't need to be wasting our time with Struggle Throat um, Angela and Ugly Tony. We don't need that. Let's move on. Last and least, let's talk about the trio of fools. So we have Michael, okay? Y'all know Michael done showed up in Texas to visit Megan, okay? Not his kids, but Megan, all right? It's the time that he meets Megan's dad. Boy, Michael got some balls on him, I tell you that. So, of course, Megan's dad sat him down, and he didn't say anything out the way. He didn't say any untruths. Okay, he said, why are you with my daughter? Okay, you a liar. That's what you are. He was like, are you married? Or are you going through a divorce? And so he was like, well, you know, I'm still married, but I'm going through a divorce. Okay, and so the daddy said, when are you going to get a divorce? Michael said, well, I don't know. It's a long process. And side note, did y'all see how Michael's hair was glistening? <laughs> Honey, Megan done got a hope to that head, child. She done put every type of oil known to man in that head. Did y'all see his hair? See, he showed up there dry. Okay, Megan done put coconut oil, avocado oil, Crisco. She done put everything in that boy's head. I said, thank you, Jesus. She moisturized. She deconditioned. Child, he is a whole mess. He's just up. So, Megan said now, like she could be, she's sitting across her boyfriend, like she proud of him. Like he has brought something to the table. Like he has accomplished something. He haven't given you nothing. Nothing but a wet penis and stress. That's all he's giving you, dummy. And then here he is still breaking up her kissing the homeboy. He wants to get down to it if she slept with the homeboy while he was locked up. And what if she did? You was mad. 
love him. That's what she said. And so the dad said, listen, you can do whatever you want. You're grown, but he ain't for you. Honey, I am all here for Megan's daddy. I like Megan's daddy. He's trying to speak. He's speaking facts. But what's she doing? Honey, she ain't hearing it. She seen that tadpole sitting across from her, and she think that she got a catch. Child. Did y'all see when they went line dance? It's just a crying shame. Just a crying shame. Megan think that she really got the man. So meanwhile, while he's in Texas with Megan, line dancing, okay? Line dancing. We have Sarah. Sarah's home with the kids. Her homegirl come over with a uh, top. Did y'all see the friend's top? I said, Lord, have mercy. They were going to have girls' night. But before they had girls' night, Sarah had to drop some dollars, did she? Sarah said, I got something to show you. So Sarah proceeds to show her friend, okay, receipts, the bank statements, where several women, including Megan, had been cash apping Michael money. In one month, Michael made almost $1,200 off of lonely, sad, desperate women. And he's sitting up here looking dusty and dry. Ain't got nothing going on for him. No job. He can't talk right. He can't walk right. He look a hot mess. And he got women. Sending him $1,200 in what month? Help me, Lord. <laughs> Help me. So Sarah says, yeah, but guess what? They sending him money. Ask me how much of that money did my kids see. Ask me how much money did I see. Ask me how much money did he give the children. Zero. Because he's trash. Because he's trash. That's all it is to it. So she says this. She says, yeah, and guess what? I pay for his cell phone bill. Y'all want to know why she pays for the cell phone bill, friends? She pays for the cell phone bill so he can keep in touch with the children. Sarah, <laughs> born at night, not last night. You didn't, you ain't paying for that man's cell phone bill because you want him to keep up with the children. You paying for that man's cell phone bill so you can keep up with him. So you can see who he talking to. That is, that is the only reason why you are still paying for this man's cell phone. Why are you even paying? You just found out that this man have been seeing different that this man not even paying child support. This man is not giving you any money for the children. And yet you are paying for his cell phone bill. He done read your name, the relationship, the marriage through hot garbage. And you are still paying for this man's cell phone bill. And you know who's calling. You can see incoming and outcoming. And you're saying that you're paying that cell phone bill because of the children. Girl, I'm not buying it. Girl, go. Girl, you better go tell that to somebody who ain't got good sense. You better go tell it to someone who ain't quite right. God know what you're doing. And this is how much Michael respects you. He knows that you pay for the cell phone. And he knows that you're going to continue to pay for the cell phone. And guess what? Guess what, Sarah? And he knows that you see who's calling him and who he's calling. And he don't care. He don't care one bit. Because he's in Texas with Megan while you down with the children fussing to your friend about how he done made $1,200 and they gave you and them children a dime and you are still paying for his cell phone bill. I'm telling you, this is why they are the trio of fools.
That's it, friends. That is it. <sighs> Get to this question. What state does Lacey and Shane live in? Alright? Leave your comment down below. Don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, friends. Bye!